Hi folks and welcome to another IBM DSI technical demonstration. In this demonstration I'd like you I'd like to take you through a story which an IBM colleague gave to me as a bit of a puzzle. He wanted to demonstrate that when data is entered on a web page that pressing a submission button on that web page could cause an event to be sent to DSI. So here is a simple web page and I can enter some values and classic hello world and hit the send event button and what that has done and wanted to be do is to send an event into DSI. Here we see hello world and the current timestamp that matches the current time. So that's what he wanted to achieve and I figured I would have a go at figuring out how to do this and that's what this demonstration is all going to be about. So let's start by having a look at the simple, and I mean simple, DSI solution project that I created. So this, this was to be illustrative. So I created a DSI solution that I called Web UI Driver. And if we look in the project definition for that, we'll find that I've created a business model definition, a BMD, which has no more than one event in it. It's just got a single event in it. And I called that event test event. And I said that event is going to have two fields associated with it called A and B. Really, really simple stuff. I then created a connectivity definition which said that we're going to listen on a binding on HTTP and we're going to listen for test event events and when one of those is found we're going to be listening rather on the web UI driver EP1 endpoint. So what this says is that when a REST request arrives at our DSI server at this local URL then we will recognize that as a test event. Okay great. So we've got our BMD we got our connectivity definition and I created a Java agent and the Java agent basically says I'm willing to process events of type test event and in that Java agent it merely logs the message we received an event plus a string XML representation of the serialized event. So if we look in our logs we should hopefully see that we receive a message. Gosh, it's tricky to move your mouse here. There we go. We should see some message along the lines of, yes, here it is. Uh, the XML message, we received an event and there is the XML representation of the message. So this Java agent gets called every time we receive a incoming event of type test event. So if we look at our web page and I go to this is, what is today? Today is Thursday. This is Thursday. Send event, click. We see that uh, a this is Thursday event arrives in our log and that can only have come from our Java agent. So this is it all working. So nothing particularly magical in our DSI solution. So all the work for making this happen happens in our web page design. So let's go have a look at this. Now uh, I don't expect every DSI programmer to be a web programmer. Uh, so don't worry if you don't get this. It's not important. But here's what I came up with for a simple web page. So the web page contains HTML and the HTML merely says a title, enter a DSI event, has some input fields with identifiers associated with them and a button with a, an identifier associated with it. So if we were to look at the screen it would look like this. The header of the page, there it is, the various input fields, input field 1 and input field 2 and an associated button that when clicked causes the event to be sent. Now this needs also some JavaScript logic 
to handle the relationship between the events. Just declaring here the HTML declares the visualization, but it doesn't declare the logic that ties it all together. So my weapon of choice today is jQuery. And so we've got a bit of jQuery web code here. And if you were to pause at this point, if you read jQuery, this would be a good point to pause it and study the jQuery. But uh, what it does is I've got a base piece of XML here. This is a string, which is the XML message that I wish to send, which will be my event. Now this I'm calling my template. I generated this from the DSI tooling by exporting the XML schema of the event that DSI is expecting asking the schema to generate itself an XML instance of that schema and then copying and pasting that instance into my JavaScript code. Now this base piece of XML string, I then parse the XML base and that turns it into a DOM model. I then take the DOM model and encapsulate that as a jQuery object. So this XML variable here is a jQuery object which encapsulates the DOM model that represents this sample XML document. I then ask the jQuery object to find the field called A, that's this field in the data, and set the text, the payload of that field, to be the value of the HTML document field called field A. I do that with B as well. So now the DOM object representing the XML document here now contains values for field A and field B of the HTML web page. I then create a new instance of the XML serializer object and I ask the serializer to serialize my jQuery DOM object which represents this XML document which turns it back into a string. So all of this code here says take this string create a DOM object representing the DOM model of this XML string find the fields in the, in the XML document that correspond to fields A and B, set their values, and now turn it back into a string representation of the XML document. So at this point, the variable str now contains an XML string representation of this XML document with the right fields in it. Finally, I use the jQuery API to post the string representation of the XML document to my DSI URL, which is the URL that DSI is listening on. And again, sounds like a lot of words, sounds like a lot of stuff, but actually from a web page programming perspective, this is absolutely business as usual. No great rocket science there. And it all just works. And I say it all just works. And what one can do is one can create in Insight Designer, one can create a web project, and then one can simply deploy that web project to your Liberty server and everything runs in one environment. Everything just runs on the Liberty server. Point your browser to the Liberty server's web page, uh, web to event, web to event. We call this index, so that's the default web page enter some values, hit send event, and the event arrives at DSI. Obviously, you could make this web page as attractive, as sophisticated as you like. That's just a matter of web page programming. You could add or remove more fields. That would be a case of adding and removing more fields in the business model definition, generating your XML templates, and changing the XML template and the population of those fields. I hope you found this useful. I'm going to post uh, this code as some samples and that will be in the associated YouTube links. Hope you found some use in this and I look forward to visiting with you again when I make some more DSI technical tutorials. Thanks now and bye-bye.